Hi all, my name is Mats Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we're taking a look at the ESAP PowerTech 200, model number LTR 200. This is a 200 ampere 7 kilowatt unit, a TIC welder. Uh, it is a uh, older model, as you can see, just from the huge size, according to its uh, current rating, that today you would get much smaller units at the same current rating. Now, uh, according to the schematics, this is driven through an isolation transformer um, by 12 power transistors. So, let's get this taken apart. Looking at the front panel here, we have the uh, negative connection for the welding handle, negative connection for ground, and we have a plus for uh, the handle or the welding uh, stick itself, uh, welding tip itself. Then there's the control connection, gas out, and I think this is maybe a dead man switch. I forgot what this two pin connector is really for. Then there is a arc starter uh, or lift uh, lift extension and gas. This is uh, yeah ramp ramp ramping current. Then you can adjust the current from three up to two hundred amps here. Not quite sure. Uh, this is something like welding direction. How you move the tip, I guess. Then you have the adjustable 0 0.5 to 10 uh, seconds for the uh, pulse width of the uh, welding ramp. And over here is the uh, gas, 5 to 20 seconds um, yeah, you, amount of gas you can get on off switch. At the bottom where we have the output connections, there also sits a large ferrite output transformer here for the um, isolation between uh, the high voltage and low voltage side. This is the control um, connector um, board up to the control board that sits on top. Over here is uh, input, um, free phase input and also the mains input filter before going up to the uh, control board and power electronics. And there is the uh, gas uh, in the valve here. Just gas comes in here through the valve, goes straight out again. So take, let's take a look at the um, control electronics. The control electronics sitting here at the top. Front panel made with burns um, potentiometers, alco switches, gold plated, high quality. The control board itself and its components, that's um, almost all discrete um, up amps, CMOS logic, maybe a few controllers and amplifiers over here, power supply section, and what does that say, in circuit functional. Yeah, I hope it's functional in circuit. Now uh, let's just uh, get the different parts here unplugged. Oh, that's a nice uh, hot glue repair we have here. Seems to have been replaced uh, with LEDs at some point, where it was maybe uh, normal um, incandescent light bulbs originally. So. There's not m so much to uh, really say about the control electronics up here. So we will quickly dive into the power electronics. So I'll just remove the top board here and we can get down to the goodies. So that was quite an interesting construction with the, a piece of metal simply folded all around the, the unit making up the whole chassis, which is quite a bl blobby by itself, but uh, once put together it was actually quite stiff. So the um, ferrite transformer that I was talking about at first, it actually looks like it is a, a DC biased um, Ah, no, no, wait. That's the arc starter. This is the output choke and the single turn around here. That's actually from this high voltage um, transformer here. To give out a peak, uh, maybe 500, 600 volt to uh, actually start the arc before um, 
switching over to the high current supply. Now the uh, inverter itself, um, it's uh, encased in this black plastic. It's very dirty because this was the main airflow tunnel. So as we can see they actually placed the uh, DC bus capacitors on the outside to spare them from the huge amount of heat generated inside the uh, ducting uh, tunnel here. So all we need is just uh, cut a few more wires to get inside of it. Now some of these are temperature and such measurements cutouts. So away those go. Now there's not much left here on the uh, bottom part of the chassis. This was the input filter. There is a control power transformer. Has a marking for the different um, fuse sizes here, but not really a part number. I think I can look up to see the voltages, but yeah, that's not too bad at all. So let's get that away. Now here's the interesting part, the power part. So that was harder than expected to get those uh, clips off the silicon there. Now the um, isolation transformer itself is actually a quite uh, large double-sided... Um, yeah, you know these from the flyback transformers, uh, pretty much assemble the, the core design from there. Uh, and then it has a another output choke here. That could be uh, some kind of bias choke or I'm not quite sure because uh, it just went through there. Uh, seems to just be an uh, iron core choke. The uh, output um, diodes are these uh, Moore P240 CT which is a double diode and rated for, yeah, I guess, 200 uh, ampere at 40 volts. The uh, input, mains input uh, rectifiers, so these two exist, yeah, standard 25 amp, 1200 volt uh, rectifier bridges sitting in parallel. Now the, um, the boards here drove each their side of the output transformer. So let's just take a look at ah these are these have probably been burning their way oh maybe they're glued on now this is for sure a uh, diode it says uh, DSEP thirty slash 12, so 30 amp, 1200 volts. Let's see if we can get one of these off the board. Uh, that just broke. There. No markings. Okay, the markings have really been destroyed by the glue, but it is a uh, ST part. Yeah, that did not do any better. Maybe the other board here has... Okay, here they are not either glued or melted to the PCB. So you can see over here we have the same uh, diode here. But on these two, you can see these are pretty sure it says V W9 NB80. 
So a, a 9N80. On the other side here. Yeah, these are the uh, the same. And it is W9 NB80. This is much more uh, clear what it says here. So yeah, overall, this unit, what did I get out of it? A couple of uh, good uh, heat sinks here, at least for mounting something uh, straight down here through uh, just with a bolt. There was the uh, two uh, output rectifier diodes. All the MOSFETs are IDPCs here, useless. Half of them is <laughs> destroyed and chipped now. Then there's of course the input rectifiers, the, those are all, always useful. Then there is this uh, uh, ferrite transformer. That can be reused or rewinded for a high voltage transformer. So yeah, I say, I'll say that for sure. And the same goes for the uh, output choke here. That also is a nice ferrite transformer. The two filtering capacitors. Yeah, let's see what does date code say. Yeah, 0308. So those are maybe from year 2003. So 16 years old, not really worth using, not coming from a uh, high uh, switching current or yeah, transient heavy, current heavy inverter like this. They are most likely not in that good condition anymore. I hope you enjoyed watching the teardown of this ESAP TIG welder. Despite its age, it had a few interesting components, but not really that much. So until next time, see ya.